Hello, I am Eric Hanley, an Automation Specialist with es &E. In this video, we will demonstrate how to build and animate some basic graphic elements for a Factory Talk Optics application. For our demonstration, we are going to start with a project that we have already created and add objects to the two screens. We will be animating a switch, a push button, a simple indicator object, animating tank level, creating a numeric input to adjust a timer, creating a multi-state indicator for a tank state, and lastly, adding a web browser object. The first object to add is a switch. So we will right click on screen one, new, base controls, and then switch. We could also use the folder view to see all the objects by double clicking on the user interface folder, opening the base control folder, then selecting the object and drag and drop onto the screen. Now that the switch is added, we need to tell it what is being done with the switch. That configuration is done in the property window. We will select the object and make sure that the property window is wide enough to see all the properties. We need to add a dynamic link for the property called Checked, which is near the top of the property window. Select the link icon and search for the tag and press select. This will launch a new search window, which will show all tags and properties that can be addressed. Using the search function at the top is best as long as you know the correct tag name. If you don't remember the tag name, then we need to scroll down under the project name folder to find the com drivers folder, open it and go to the driver, then the shortcut, then the tag folder, and finally the controller tag folder. This folder structure was created for us during the tag import wizard. Then we will need to find the tag called mode switch and press select or double click it. If we want to add additional actions, we need to look at the bottom section for events and then see the modified value, which has a plus sign. Select the plus sign and a new search window will appear. We will then open that to the commands folder and the variable commands and pick toggle. Even though there is a toggle bit command, we are working with a Boolean tag, so we should choose toggle. Toggle bit allows you to edit individual bits of a dint or int data type. After we highlight toggle, we need to press the select and in the event is added to the switch. Now we need to assign a tag. So we will press the add dynamic link button next to the variable to modify property. This isn't needed for our system because we don't need an extra event. We can also resize and move the object around so that it is where we want it on the screen. We can then add a text box to label the switch. We double click in the text field and type in mode switch. But then we could also move to the default style sheet and increase the font size from 12 to 24. We will see our text will automatically update. We will also want to verify that the width and height are set to auto. If you see a value in these properties, you can simply edit the number and type in the word auto. This will fit the box to the text typed into the box. Now we have finished adding objects to the screen, so we should save our project. We will want to verify the project. Verifying will let us know that we don't have any errors or warnings. Some examples could be non-affiliated tags or improper tag types. Once the project is saved and verified, we could now emulate and test our screens. The next object we will add is a push button. So we will find a momentary push button object in the base controls and drag and drop that onto the screen. We will edit the button by scrolling down in the property window. We are looking to change the text on the button to say start. Below the text and font section, there is also the option to add an image. If you wanted to use an image instead, you can import any picture by selecting the browse button next to the image path. This opens a file directory that is the default images for optics. You can press the folder icon to see where the file is 
within the project folder structure. This allows you to use the Windows File Explorer to add images into this directory. Or you can press the import icon and browse your computer to find the image and it will automatically put it in the default optics project file location. We will go to my picture folder and import the ESNE logo to add later, but we will not assign it to this button. Next, we need to assign an event for the button to do something. So we will select the dynamic link icon next to the active property. This pulls up all the taggable references and we will type in the word start. We will scroll down and find the tag called system start push button. And once it is highlighted, we'll press select. Let's assign min and max time for the button press. To do this, we will scroll up and add time to the min hold time and set it to 100 milliseconds. Also adding a max hold time of 250 milliseconds. This will make a momentary push button, but it will also prevent someone from holding it down or accidentally pressing it. Now, when we press the button down, it will be true and it will go back to false after 150 milliseconds. The next object we will add is an LED for indication of our sensors. We will change our color to green and then add a link to the active property. We will search for a tag called sensor1. Then we are going to copy and paste the object and change the tag to sensor2 for a second LED. We will add a linear gauge to show our tank level and it works well that adding the object to the screen already has a scale of 0 to 100. But we need to change the orientation from horizontal to vertical. Then we will resize it to fit better on our screen and we will adjust our sensors to line up with the 25 and 75 percent. Now we will add a duration object to allow us to modify a timer. Drop the object onto the screen and change the value of the tag to solenoid 3 delay dot preset. That is all we need to do for this object and it works really well for timers because it has the ability to do unit conversion right in the object to get milliseconds into the controller. Last, we need to link a value for the gauge and we will add the tag called tank level. Now we will add a quick label to say solenoid 3 delay above our numeric input. Next, we will create a multi-state indicator from a text box. After we drop the box, we need to add a link next to the text. When the search menu appears, we need to select advanced. Then in the box where it shows the text, we need to hit the plus sign. This allows us to add new properties to the text object, but we want to select key value converter. The key value converter allows us to link a tag and convert a property based on that tag. Once we add a key value, we will see the link box, so we will find the tag called machine1state. Then, where the box says key value converter, we will select the configure button. This will open a new window where the key is the value we are monitoring with the dynamic link, and the values are the property that we want to change. We will add two more states, so we will have a zero, a one, and a two. Now that we have three keys for our states, we need to modify the property we want to change. In our demo, we want to edit the text itself. The default property is always string, so that works for our system. But if we wanted to edit another property, such as color, then we would need to select the word string that is in blue, which means it will open up a new data type editor window. When in the window, we need to check the box saying show all. This now displays all the potential properties that can be edited, and we would highlight the property called color and press select. Then we would need to press the box on the right to allow us to pick a color, unless you know the hexadecimal code for the color. We have completed adding all the objects to screen one, now we need to add our browser onto screen two. We open screen two and add a web browser that is found in the contents folder. Once we add the browser, we will set our alignment to stretch for both the horizontal and vertical, plus put a margin of zero. This will allow the browser to resize without distorting the screen. We need to modify the URL address to browse where we want to see. 
I have a URL already saved for the controller web dashboard, so I will paste this string directly into the URL field. That will complete all of the objects we plan on animating. Now we can emulate and transfer the runtime file. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please reach out to your local ESNE account manager or automation specialist.